The assassination of Count Bernadotte deepens the shadow over the world scene as statesmen meeting in Paris for the third UNO assembly pay their last tribute. The death of UNO's Palestine negotiator is one sign among many that the authority of the United Nations is in question. As the delegates of 58 states assemble, their agenda contrasts sharply with the solemn undertaking of United Nations to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. This was made at the time when the world recoiled from the nightmare of Hiroshima. In this seared and wasted shell that was a city, mankind read a last warning. A world, aghast at its own ingenuity, saw and was afraid. Yet control of atomic weapons was UNO's first stumbling block. The Soviet government proposes to consider the proposals of the United States representative submitted on December 5, 1946, concerning the control of atomic energy. But Russia would not agree to international control. From this first veto by the Soviet, sprang 27 others within less than two years. No to veto restrictions, no to the principle of the majority vote, no to the admission of many Western countries into UNO. And no, even to the romance of those foreigners who made the unhappy mistake of marrying Russian girls. The denial of recognized human rights ascended from the individuals to the great masses of the vanquished nations. Under the threat of mass starvation, Berlin became the symbol of resistance against the veto on peace and progress. Assembling at the House of Commons to hear a grave report, Britain's leaders came to the firm resolve to make a stand with their allies. For long tried patience is not to be confused with weakness. The end of three weary years of bickering has, to Ernest Bevin, centered in Berlin. Still seeking peace through negotiation, the Allies look to their arms. The Royal Navy's autumn exercises bring the fleet to life. America stages her biggest post-war maneuvers. The RAF, fast re-equipping, tests the defensive shield under which Britain finds that early and provident fear is the mother of safety. <laughs> 